This is Prince Mongo. Even though he always dresses like a Neanderthal Darth Vader, we were told he's one of the most influential people in Memphis. And we weren't just told by him. When Prince Mongo announced Skylab was going to fall in the city, the police believed him and cordoned off some of the streets. When he ran for mayor, he came in fourth in a field of six. Many of his fans and followers believe when he visits hospitals, he can heal the sick. Now, some people think Mongo is just a little bit spacey, and he agrees. He claims that he's from outer space, from a planet called Zambodia, which he still calls home. When I just got back from the planet. I was gone for about six weeks. We live next door to Prince Mongo and have for the last three months. Um, just always very nice. He's always he, a gentleman to mm -hmm. us. We, we'd like to use his pool, but we're afraid that something from outer space might get us if we go over there. Prince Mongo's earthly home is located in a really nice section of Memphis. While some of the neighbors have nice statues to help enhance their lawns and landscaping, the prince's front yard looks like a permanent garage sale. It is always piled up with a half a dozen or so old automobiles, one or two of which work. Well, I think he's the biggest mess ever was. But the mess I saw on the outside <laughs> was nothing compared to some of what I was going to see on the inside. At the door, I was greeted by one of Prince Mongo's earthling followers who ushered me in to meet the prince. Prince Mongo? Hi, Spirit. How are you? My name's John Barber. Very pleased sure, to meet you. My pleasure, Spirit. Let me After greeting me, the prince introduced me to some of his Zambodian in-laws. This is Monrovia, one of our ancestors from the planet. The uh, piano is Princess Bianca. And over here is uh, Genevia. She likes ducks. <laughs> that's Spirit Nello. Mm -hmm. uh, where's the rest of Nello? Oh, uh, well, that's the only thing. She wanted to be here right now. The rest of her is in another place. She just wanted to come here as a head? That's all. Mm -hmm. Relatives weren't the only old things just lying or hanging around the house. An ancient Latin Bible, gold and silver goblets, jade statues, Tiffany lamps, old muskets, and prehistoric Indian artifacts, much of it just tossed in the corners. When we finally sat down at the table to talk, the prince brought his Zambodian bones to keep him company. And so I would have some company. He sat me next to a stuffed snake. The prince told me Zambodians don't eat, but I could see that from the condition of his in-laws. By now, I wasn't feeling too hungry myself. We survived strictly on energy. That's why I don't sleep. I haven't slept for over three and a half years. How many cars do you have? Oh, I've got over 50 cars. Why do you have so many cars? Well, I can't ride in one too long because they are possessed. The evils get in them and they do something to the steering. When you first came to Earth from Zambodia, were you born unto earthling parents? You know how Superman got here? Mm -hmm. I have the theory is. Mm -hmm. I basically came the same way. And who were your earthling parents? Minnie and Buck. Hi. What was your name then? The name was Hodges. Uh, Robert. Robert. Robert Hodges? Robert, yes. Do you miss uh, some of your fellow Zambodia? Oh, they come to Earth all the time, and I go there. I go there frequently. How, uh, how do you get back and forth? I just disintegrate. When I leave Earth, I completely become invisible and leave. Could you make yourself invisible right now? If I wanted to, I could, yes. Oh, do you want to? No. The prince said he didn't always disintegrate and go back to Zambodia to talk to his people. He said he often just goes up on the roof at night and calls long distance. What is the name of the most prominent person on Zambodia? The one that you talk to when you go up on the roof at night? That spirit, Bucko. What would you say to people who said, the prince doesn't have both oars in the water? Oh. He will uh, yell and scream at night, and he comes around here like a, like Tarzan. Uh, he's always causing some kind of commotion over in the neighborhood. Not only did the prince ignore some of the neighbors' pleas to shut up, but he ignored theirs and City Hall's pleas to clean up. His house was filled with dozens of unopened final notices from the health department. I opened one eight months old. Now it says here, Mongo, provide sufficient regulation garbage cans. Now you got three X's beside that one. They like to make X's. You had a coffin. 
and uh, had my name on the coffin for some reason. I guess he didn't like me because I was tried to clean up the place. And what did he say to you when you told him to clean up the place? Oh, I don't recall now. He gave some of that Cambodia lingo. <laughs> All we can do is get him to the bus. Where do you get your, your money to survive? I don't need money. I don't but he does need money to pay those $50 fines. And there's a lot of speculation around Memphis as to where that money comes from. And we've heard he's inherited uh, a lot of money. I heard uh, that he has parents who um, live in the eastern part of the United States who pay him a stipend to stay down in Memphis here. However, newspaper reporter Otis Sanford told me his money came from someplace else. Several years ago, uh, Prince Mongo took out an insurance policy, took out two insurance policies with the Springfield Mutual Life Insurance Company, uh, agreeing to pay him $2,000 per month if ever he became uh, disabled. Otis told me after paying on the policies for eight years, the prince had himself declared emotionally disabled, and for two years, the insurance company paid off on the claim, then had second thoughts and took him to court. And then I decided that I was going to sue them for the money, and then they decided to sue me first because they knew I was suing them, so then I sued them after they sued me. He came in on, in a loincloth, an enormous fuzzy sort of thing. The court and the insurance company had Mongo sent to one of Memphis' leading clinical psychologists who did a psychological profile of him. Well, the illness that was diagnosed by both Dr. Harris and myself was manic depressive psychosis. I asked the doctor if it was possible for Prince Mongo to fool a psychologist. It's almost impossible to keep this up to the extent that he has it over a period of time. How long did you examine Prince Mongo? I suppose I examined him for about an hour and 15 minutes. I didn't make a record. The judge ruled after one day trial that Prince Mongo was suffering from mental illness and therefore he was entitled to receive the money. It was a wild trial. For weeks, Prince Mongo's wild trial was the talk of Memphis and turned everyone in town into an armchair psychologist. Some people will do anything for attention and I don't think Prince Mongo is crazy. There's no question about it. He is stone crazy. Sometimes he acts perfectly normal and other times he's just like he's on another planet, really. I think the prince believes his tale that he's from another planet and he certainly is consistent with his oddities. He's a glorified prankster. Uh, the whole thing is, is I am just nervous. We are just arrived in, yeah, in Memphis and we don't know Princess Mango. Take him with you when you leave, will you? One lady told me she didn't know if the prince's head was in the right place, but she did feel his heart was. And indeed, as I was leaving, still wondering if Robert Hodges was putting on the world or whether as Prince Mongo, he was out of this world, he gave me the highest Zambodian blessing. It will be all right from now on, and may the Zambodians be with you. And if you have any problems, you contact me. You don't want me to throw you on your head? Oh, no, thank you. All I've right. been blessed enough. Thank all you very right, much. Spirit, and I want you to control yourself and, and uh, do come back. Okay. And take care now. Please take me along for a ride.